Welcome to another episode of Math Skills on Performance. This time, we'll take a look at inspecting performance. What do we mean by inspecting performance? We define it as understanding what's happening in your app and making sure it aligns with what you expect is happening. There are three ways to inspect performance, passive, manual, and automated. Let's take a look at each one of them now. Passive inspection is when you don't have to do any extra work to spot a performance problem in your app. You can either visually spot when your app drops frames, or you can check locket for bits of information. Dropped or frozen frames are also called visual jank or jank for short. I've added some poorly performing code into the now in Android sample app to demonstrate what you can see in locket when jank happens. You can filter locket messages by the choreographer tag and search for skipped messages. This gives you information on slow rendering, which means at least 30 skipped frames. On devices rendering 90 frames per second, it's 333 milliseconds, which is just a third of a second. If your app skips even more frames, lasting more than 700 milliseconds, we call that a frozen frame. You can again filter locket and search for the open GL renderer tag and see if there's any Davy in the logs. If your app freezes for over five seconds, you get the infamous application not responding dialog or ANR. I hope you haven't seen that one for a while. To spot slow app startups, you can use locket as well. You can filter the activity task manager tag and message starting with displayed to filter time to initial display or TTID. That is how long it took to draw the first frame every time you open an activity. If you call the activity.reportFullyDrawn method in your app, then you can also filter messages starting with fully drawn to see how long the time to fully drawn or TTFD took. Now, you may have noticed some performance problems during development. One source of issues can be measuring performance on the Android emulator. While it has many nice features and use cases to develop quickly, it's not the right tool for measuring performance. First, the Android emulator doesn't represent a real-world device. And second, it shares the same system resources as your host operating system. If it's under heavy load, your apps will perform worse and vice versa. So make sure you measure performance on a physical device. Also, for development, you probably built your app with debuggable equals true. Debuggable builds provide many features useful for development, like live edit, applying changes without reinstalling the app, or working with the debugger. But it adds performance overhead to your app and makes performance unstable, which means that sometimes it will perform well but other times it may not. So whenever you spot a performance issue, make sure you verify it on a physical device and on the release version of your app. Ideally, try to simulate an environment as close as possible to what you ship to your users. Okay, once you've spotted the problem and you're able to reproduce it, you can inspect the performance manually. For that, you can use Android Studio Profilers. Profiler is similar to debugger. What the debugger is for stepping through code, looking at parameter and property values, the profiler is for inspecting CPU, memory, network usage, as well as possible sources of jank. Remember, you should run the profiler on a non-debuggable version of your app. To enable profiling a release build, add the XML tag to your Android manifest. This tag is available from Android 10, API 29 onwards. For more details on what types of profilers it enables, check out our documentation. Now that your app is correctly set up to manually inspect performance, you can use system tracing. It lets you collect and examine timing information for everything that's happening on your device. So you can understand what your app is doing and see when things are taking longer than you'd expect. If you'd like to dive deeper into manual performance inspection, we encourage you to take a look at our earlier math skills series on the topic.
In this series, Carmen shows you how to use system tracing, how to get more information with custom trace sections, how to use call stack sampling profiling, and more. Automated inspection is the third way to look at your app's performance. With automated performance inspection, you can reliably run the same steps in a flow and even prevent a performance issue before it occurs. And while it takes a little setup, you get peace of mind when it comes to ensuring your app's performance does not get worse. You can get started with Jetpack Macrobenchmark library. This library allows you to automate inspecting performance of entire user flows. This way, you can measure app startup, which is a key metric for user engagement, frame timing for investigating jank, and other performance metrics. To get started with Macro Benchmark, you can use the module wizard in Android Studio. Navigate to the project pane, select a new module, and select Benchmark from the templates pane. Then, make sure you have Macro Benchmark selected, fill in the details, and click Finish. Android Studio takes care of creating the Benchmark module, modifying your build script by adding the additional build type, and adding the right dependencies. This build type is based on the release build type to keep performance as close as possible to your production app. If your app uses build flavors, you can define which flavor to use when building the benchmarks by defining a missing dimension strategy. You can define it in the default config block of the benchmark module. In the now in Android sample app, we use flavor dimension named content type with demo and prod options. I'll use the demo here as it provides us with enough content to be measured. Alternatively, you can define your app's build flavors in the benchmark module, which allows you to benchmark them all. Now that we have our project set up, we can start writing the benchmarks. You write the benchmarks as regular instrumentation tests. The newly added module comes with a basic benchmark test that measures the app startup. Within the test class, you need to use the macro benchmark rule and use the measure repeated method in your tests. This method takes several parameters you need to define. Let's go over them. First, you need to specify package name. This is because the benchmarks are installed as a separate test APK. So we need to know which app should be launched and benchmarked. Next, define metrics. Metrics are the main type of information collected from the target app during benchmarking. Here we specify startup timing metric that allows you to measure time to initial display and time to fully display. There are other metrics you can use to collect different types of information. For example, the frame timing metric that allows you to measure the cost of producing each frame and helps you to find jank in your app. Trace section metric that can measure any trace section, the ones defined by Android platform or by the libraries you use, and even custom trace sections you defined. You can even capture underruns while playing audio with the audio underrun metric. We're aiming to add more metrics in the future. With the next parameter, you need to set how many times the benchmark should run. The basic benchmark has the iterations parameter set to 5, but you may change the number based on how noisy a particular metric is for your app. In general, a higher number means more stable data, but at the cost of longer execution time. The next parameter is startup mode. With it, you can tell Macro Benchmark to start your app with cold, warm, or hot startup mode. If you don't know where to begin, use cold. This will give you the most data as this is where the most work happens. Warm or hot are helpful when you want to benchmark things that don't require cold starts, such as caching mechanisms or user flows that likely won't be started cold. The test logic of your benchmark happens in the measure block. Here you define the interactions with your app. The Jetpack Macro Benchmark library comes with several helper functions to get you started quickly. In the benchmarks, you should call press home to reset the state of the device you run the benchmarks on. 
Then you can call start activity and wait. This function starts the default activity and waits until the first frame is drawn. You can also specify the intent of your custom activity to be started. These two function calls are enough to measure time to initial display. If you want to measure how long it takes for your app to become interactive, you need to wait for a specific UI state in the benchmark. Because by default, the benchmark would stop execution once the first frame is drawn. You can use UI Automator through the device parameter to interact with your app. So here, let's wait until there's a specific UI element visible on screen that we know is visible once the UI is fully drawn and ready to use. With this defined, the benchmarks will wait for the content to be fully drawn and will measure both TTID and TTFD. Now that we have our benchmark well defined, we can run it and the microbenchmark library will take care of all things required to collect the appropriate data based on the metrics you've defined. First, make sure you have the appropriate build variant selected. In the case of now in Android, this is the demo benchmark. You can run the benchmark with the run gutter icon next to the test function or for the entire class. Make sure you run the benchmarks on a real device. In fact, if you try to run the benchmarks on an emulator, it will fail at runtime with an error. If you don't have a physical device and want to try running the benchmarks, you can suppress the error, but we only recommend doing this during development as benchmark data will be different from what you see on real devices. Once the benchmark is finished, the results are provided directly in the Android Studio output pane, but also as a JSON file on device and in the build output so you can parse them and plot them as part of your continuous integration. Each of the numbers is actually a link to the system tracing recorded during the benchmark, which you can open and inspect what was happening during the iteration. Alternatively, you can run the benchmarks from the terminal using the Gradle task as any instrumentation tests. Similarly to App Startup, we can benchmark rendering to inspect potentially janky scenarios. For that, we will create another test class, let's name it Scroll Feed Benchmark. We annotate that class with Run With annotation to be a proper test class. And there, we'll use the same macro benchmark rule for running benchmarks. Let's write a test method that selects a couple of authors and then scrolls the feed content. We'll use the same parameters as for the startup benchmark, except for metrics because we'll use frame timing metric. The interactions will be the same as for the app startup, but in this case, we'll need to add them to the setup block instead of the measure block. The setup block is super useful when you have to prepare the state of your app up to the point where your measurement should take place. It's an optional parameter and not always needed. In the measure block, we will find the feed list UI element set the gesture margin so we don't trigger system navigation and scroll the feed with the fling gesture. Once we have that, we can run the benchmark the same way as before on a physical device. In this case, Android Studio will produce results in percentiles. You will see how long a frame took with the frame duration metric, and when running the benchmarks on Android 12, API 31 and higher, you'll also see the frame overrun metric, which says by how much time the frames were over the limit. The number can be negative, meaning there was extra time left to produce the frame. Let's open a system trace to see what was happening during the benchmark. In Android Studio Chipmunk, we added a junk detection feature. It allows you to see the frames that took longer than expected in the system trace. On a timeline here, we can see red sections 
These are the frames that exceeded the expected duration. You can click on it to see what work was done as part of that frame. On the right side, you can also select the All Frames tab to see frames produced during the system trace. And there you can select just the janky frames to get the ones that caused a problem. And that's it for how to inspect performance in your app. I have shown you how to set up, configure, and run your first macro benchmark tests. In the next episode, we'll take a look at how to improve app startup and runtime with baseline profiles. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to Android Developers YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.